Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Morning 5 on Monday, December 29th, 2014. I am Dave Biddle. Ohio State held its first practice at the Superdome on Sunday and will practice at the Dome again today. The practice is open to the media and our Steve Hellwagon will be there covering it. Yesterday, five Alabama defensive players and defensive coordinator Kirby Smart met with the media. Likewise, five Ohio State offensive players and offensive coordinator Tom Herman met with reporters. The big takeaway was that both Alabama and Ohio State are getting information on each other from their conference opponents. No one named names yesterday, but for example, you can bet Nick Saban is getting as much information as he can on the Buckeyes from his old buddy Mark D'Antonio. Just like Urban Meyer and Herman are trying to find out what works best against the Crimson Tide from their buddies in the business. This should surprise no one. It happens all the time. It's just that, for whatever reason, it's been a hot topic of conversation the last 24 to 48 hours. Perhaps because people like Coach Smart and Coach Herman are actually being honest and admitting it happens. I've seen fans say that D'Antonio would be acting disloyal to the Big Ten if he shared any secrets about Ohio State to Alabama. But trust me, this goes on all the time across college football. It's nothing new, and both the Crimson Tide and Buckeyes are doing it. As for the game itself, Alabama is holding steady as a 9-point favorite. The spread actually opened at 9.5 points, and I thought it might reach double digits. But the money is going slightly the way of the Buckeyes thus far. I think we're in for a very good game on Thursday. My gut tells me Alabama will win in a close one, but I think Ohio State will be in it all the way, and we'll have a good chance to emerge victorious. This is a very good Alabama team, but it's not the dominant squad that the Tide have fielded in recent seasons. Everyone is talking about the matchup between Alabama wide receiver Amari Cooper and Ohio State cornerback Duran Grant, and that will be a key matchup. But I think an even bigger matchup is Alabama's defensive line against Ohio State's offensive line. If the Buckeyes can give Cardiel Jones time to throw, and Jones can avoid making big mistakes, the Buckeyes will have an excellent chance at winning. I'm confident Ohio State's defensive line will play well. So if the offensive line follows suit, that will be huge because, as we all know, football games are won up front. If the Buckeyes want to win this game, they need to win the battle in the trenches. Moving on, it's not official yet, but Jim Harbaugh is expected to be named Michigan's head coach later today, or by tomorrow at the very latest. I find this situation oddly exciting. Harbaugh will bring instant hatred back to the rivalry, as if you need it anymore, and he will make Michigan relevant again. Look how fast he turned around Stanford, and Michigan has many more resources in terms of football than Stanford does, and look how quickly Harbaugh turned around the San Francisco 49ers. The Niners were bad during the Mike Singletary years before he got there, but Harbaugh turned them around immediately. Michigan won't be a great team right away in 2015. They might not even be a good team, but they'll have a winning record under Harbaugh in 2015. And then by 2016, he should have them ready to compete for a Big Ten championship. But no Ohio State fan should be scared of this. First of all, Urban Meyer has a three-year head start on Harbaugh as far as recruiting, stockpiling talent, developing the roster the way that he wants. Michigan's roster right now is a disaster. It has several major holes, most notably at the quarterback position. On top of that, even if Meyer didn't already have a three-year head start on Harbaugh, Meyer is a proven winner with two national championships already under his belt. Now, Michigan State's run of being state champions might be overdue to Harbaugh's arrival. I'd be worried if I was Mark D'Antonio, but the Wolverines have a long way to go to catch the Buckeyes. It should be a lot of fun. I'm already referring to it as the five-year war. I don't see it lasting ten years. Either Meyer will win a national championship or two and retire five years from now, or Harbaugh will go back to being an NFL coach. I tend to think the latter is probably the most likely, but I do think we'll get a great five years that will do Woody and Bo proud. Now for the latest on recruiting, let's go out to, who else? The Dean of Ohio State Football Recruiting, Bill Curlick. Will the Buckeyes lose any of their current 24 verbal equipments to another school? Lots of talk about that possibly happening, especially with Jim Harbaugh set to take over at Michigan, according to reports. And there are really four prospects whose names have come up, those being defensive back Carlton Davis, quarterback Torrance Gibson, running back Michael Weber, and defensive back slot receiver Eric Glover Williams. But I feel that in all likelihood, all four and all of the Buckeyes' 24 commitments will end up signing with Ohio State. Davis, I think, will end up turning down Miami's overtures. His family certainly would not mind seeing him stay closer to home, but I think that there's a good chance he stays with Ohio State. He has continued to tell me that is his plan. Torrance Gibson is talking about making official visits to Auburn and Central Florida, but I like the Buckeyes' chances there as well. Eric Glover Williams mentioned that Michigan State is still recruiting him and wants to, to make an official visit there, but he has been a solid commitment to Ohio State from the beginning, and I expect that to stay the same. And I think that Michael Weber, Weber does stay with 
his commitment to Ohio State, even though I expect Michigan to make another run on him. So I feel very good about all four prospects when all is said and done being in this Ohio State recruiting class. Thank you, Bill. It's good to know you think all four of them will sign with the Buckeyes in the end. For more on recruiting, Bill already has his daily buzz posted to the site. Today's update includes items on Justin Hilliard, Tyler Gerald, Damian Harris, and more. Again, we will have much more team coverage today, and then tomorrow is media day at the Superdome when Coach Meyer, all assistant coaches, and all players will be available for interviews. So Tuesday will be a monumental day as far as team coverage goes. Thanks again to Bill Curlick. Thanks to all the listeners out there. I hope you have a great day. Take it away, best damn band in the land. Oh.